it's a beautiful day no it's a beautiful late afternoon early evening and to prove that take a look at the shadows casted along the fence you can see the shadows are quite low and long and if you recall from the previous episode i told you that this side is west that side is east and the shadows are pointing that way it can only mean it's late afternoon it has been quite warm the whole day over 33 maybe 33 34 degrees 91 92 fahrenheit and there's a curious magpie behind me <laughs> and today i'm going to start working on my shade structure covering the entire length along the fence maybe this side as well and that's in preparation for all of the warmer days ahead of us i wonder what the magpie is doing probably looking for food If you stick around, we'll be discussing how to pick the proper shade cloth for your climate and how to go about creating shade structure. <laughs> now before we begin, let's start by discussing why we even have to bother creating shade structure to protect our plants. The thing is, there would come a point in the year where it, you get the most amount of sunlight, the most amount of heat, where the sun is most direct on your area. And we all know that season as summer. In more extreme latitudes like ours, there's a wide gap between the coldest and the hottest day of the year. It has a lot to do with the length of day that we get during summer. Compare that with the very short days that we get in winter. Now, the closer you are to the equator, it's mostly just warm and hot. <laughs> And no doubt, you would need more protection than us. And so far, from the past few years, I've experienced a maximum of 51 or 52 degrees Celsius. And by then, some of my plants were starting to get burn marks, sunburns. But the others, particularly those in the front, we didn't even bother covering them last summer. And they endured the heat. And again, some of them developed burn marks, but those leaves were quickly replaced when summer ended. So as soon as summer was over, my HIVRs went out of their pseudo dormancy in summer. They started opening up again and they started growing again. My opinion is that if the temperatures start going over 35 degrees consistently, then that's a good time to start placing shade cloth over your plants. And on the flip side, you would want to remove the shade cloth only when it starts going consistently below 30 degrees. You know, when there's no longer any when there's no longer any chance of going over 30 degrees because by then your plants would be so used to being under the shade but that by the time you remove the shade cloth they would be in for a shock exposed to the sun again so that's something to be mindful of this would be my third summer growing succulent plants and this means that it would be my third time uh, setting up a shade structure over them in my first couple of iterations i was going with a cheap solution and every year i went with a temporary shade protection solution and by that i mean i just create a shade structure by tying stuff to the fence and keeping them on only during summer removing them once summer ends and i do that because i want to maintain a certain amount of light level and at the same time keep the heat down and a lot of the heat comes from uv so what you're after is a shade cloth that blocks UV light. And that's where this comes in. You'll find this in your local hardware supply store, in the big box stores. But I think you would be able to find this cheaper if you look at eBay. I got this large roll of 30 meters from eBay. And this is definitely a lot cheaper than if I went to a hardware store like Bunnings, where they sell prepackaged shade cloth or by the meter. So I highly suggest that you check out eBay. Now, this shade cloth comes in many configurations and the main thing that you have to look at is the UV rating. It, that tells you how much UV light they block. And the rating that you should get depends mainly on how much light you're getting, how much heat. There might be a correlation to your climate or to your latitude. In my case, right here in Melbourne, a shade cloth with a rating, UV rating of 30% is perfect. Any higher than that, then there's a chance that the plants would go leggy, stretch, or etiolate. So I generally stick to 30%. And the reason I say that is because Melbourne is quite famous for having four seasons in a day, so to speak. So one minute it's hot, then it suddenly becomes cold, there's a cool change or whatever, and then it rains, then it stops raining, then sun again, cloudy again. So there's a huge variability in the weather. The 30% 
down here in Melbourne allows us to cope with all of those cloudy days and at the same time remove the sting, remove the edge of the, the warm and the hot days. Now on eBay, I ordered a 30% white shade cloth but unfortunately what they sent me, at least according to the notes, at least according to the labels here, says 50%. Now, originally I was thinking I wanted to complain but in the name of science, I think I'm going to try with 50 again. So I remember trying with 50 during my first run, then I, I switched to 30% in the second summer. So let's see how this goes. Again, regarding the UV rating, it might the recommended rating might be different depending on where you live. Like I said, I would recommend using 30% at least based on what I experienced here in the garden. I've got friends who live in northern parts of Australia who swear by 50% and 70% and that's too heavy for us here. If I if I use 70% then I don't think my plants would be getting enough light anymore. 50 might be just right. So yeah, I'm going to have a shot using this. I won't return this and at least this way I would be able to prove myself that 50% is alright. When it comes down to it though, there's no, there's no real difference because the prices are all the same regardless of the UV rating so but another reason why I like using 30% is that I, I prefer my plants to be getting the most amount of sunlight that they can because the entire point of me planting them outdoors is for them to be fully exposed to the elements and if I deny them a lot of the sunlight 50% or 70% of the sunlight then what's the point I might as well just create a roof over them you know so I guess it's time to open this thing up I know it says 50% on the label, but looking at the cloth now, it strangely looks a lot like my 30%, my other 30% cloth. I'll go grab the others and let's compare. Now here's the shade cloth that I used from last year. And as you can see, I'm still quite, it might still be able to see me through the cloth. And when I compare with the shade plot I see here now, it appears that they are of the same thickness, the same lightness. And by lightness, I mean that the, the amount of space between the holes, between the stitches, they seem to be similar. So maybe, just maybe, I actually got a 30% and they just mislabeled the label. So that turned out for the best. I'm not sure if this is a good idea, but I'm thinking of using a single roll or a single cut to stretch to span the entire fence. But again, this is an experiment. This is version 3, third summer. So I'll see if this works and I'll improve on this method next year. I'm going to use a single strip for now, this is going to be a huge gamble because with a single strip, they're likely to do this, what you call this, flailing, they will flail, yeah, they will flail around in the wind, but if I tie them to stakes that are arranged regularly, so maybe one every few meters, then it might keep them down, so yeah, this is going to be another test for me, I'll see if this works, and if not, I'll improve on it next year. So I've already figured out how long the length of the shade cloth that I need and I could cut it here now. And when I say stakes, these are what I'm talking about actually. These are metal posts and I'm going to spread them around, give some place for my cloth to that onto, that way they won't fly away, they won't flail when it gets too windy. Crickets are chirping, it's getting late now. 
so I stopped. I took a break from working on my shade structure because it was getting late. As you can see, it's quite dark now and it's currently 10.55 p.m. But I was just looking at my weather app and it says here that it is 38 degrees tomorrow. Because of that, I'm thinking that I should finish this now before I go to bed because knowing myself, I'm not an early riser so I'm pretty sure I won't be able to do this tomorrow morning. Over time. That's it, I'm done with this side. I'll be working on the other parts at some point later this week. But for now, I think I'm just going to lay the shade cloth on top of them because I don't think I'll be able to finish working on the shade structure. I wonder how it looks like in the morning. start working on this side I've removed the shade cloth it was covering the plants for now and from here all I have to do is to put down the stakes that way I would have uh, somewhere to tie them down and compared to how I did it last year I think I would need fewer metal stakes this time I'll get right to it last year I had a bunch of metal stakes driven in the ground here I think there was about four about two here I think and another two here so there was four creating a plot a rectangle rectangular plot but it looks like based on the technique that I used along the fence now I might be able to get away with just using two stakes this time so that's two fewer stakes compared to last year I guess we could say the stakes are lower Last year I had two strips of shade cloth, one strip was covering this side and another strip on this side but I think that this time I should just go with one strip because last year all of the plants right next to the house, those at the back they were starting to stretch, losing a lot of their color and that's telling me that they did not get enough sunlight so I guess the, one, the only ones that need protection are those that are further away from the house and just this layer out here so what I'll do is to drive two metal stakes down here and connect them over here.
and we're done. I still have to figure out what to do with these plants here, but the path of least resistance for me is to just remove them from here, place them somewhere under the shade, you know, just scatter them around the garden. I think I might just do that. With all of my plants shaded, I think I'm ready for summer. And with that out of the way, I'll see you in the next episode. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters such as Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Lorena Noti, Camila Reyes, Linda Leal, Gwen Ott, Jesse May, Q2, and everyone else who pledge on Patreon. Thank you so much. And finally, you can check out my Instagram, that's at SiriscaPage, and I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag DailyEcheveria.